Here at Pink Bike, we review loads of bikes, but as any mountain biker knows, the size sticker on the down tube and the frame only tells half the story. How people set up and ride it, well, that's where the journey really begins. Lots of this is very subjective. So we thought it was high time. We got three of us in the woods to review, ride, and maybe even roast each other's bikes. First up is the Mondeo with the chrome wheel arches. Mike Kazimer's Fuel EX. This is the mixed wheel setup and it is unsurprisingly, unbelievably sensible. Next, we have a bike from a man who went to dental school long enough to know how to buy a Yeti, but listen to enough Fleetwood Mac to know how to make it horrible, it's Dario's Yeti 160. And last but not least, we have the bike you're all here to see, the ruling champion, most sensible bike in BC. It's my long-term loner and test mule, the Transition Spire. So let's get into it. Let's get riding these bikes and ultimately discussing just how horrible Dario's stem is. So before we get into this, let's all talk about what we think the criticisms around our bikes will be. A pre-defense. A pre-defense for mm. some people, maybe. I'll cut this. <laughs> Kaz, what do you think me and Dario are going to be critical of on your bike? I mean, my bike's pretty much perfect, so you'd probably mm -hmm. just be like, oh, this bike's great. But if it does, it has had some headset trouble lately. Not trouble, a little noise. I think I quieted it down. Hmm. I a quieted noise. It down. A mysterious noise. <laughs> yeah. mysterious but I think I got to fix I think I tightened it. I think I quieted it down, so I think it's fine. But that could maybe come up. And then uh, it's going to be probably a little soft for you guys. So the suspension might feel soft, but it's perfect for me. Yeah. So not ton of room. Otherwise, yeah, mostly perfect. Okay. Yeah. Dario, what do you think the criticism might be of your bike? Uh, okay. So I know there's going to be aesthetic criticism. I know. Mm -hmm. I, so I'm, I wanna, trying to, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look shocked. So like all the parts work fantastically when they're maintained well, uh, <laughs> but they don't necessarily look cohesive. There's a lot. There's no. like four tones of brown. Yes. There's the the Yeti teal, which looks great. Two tones of Kashima, as per usual. The other thing is the brakes don't feel great right now. Otherwise, it's perfect. Was, okay. it, was it in a fire? We'll talk about it later. Yeah. We'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me. I think I have caught, I have my bars rolled quite far forward. I think that's something that that's just that's just how, how I ride them. I mean, it's hard. I think my bike is pretty much perfect. So, Kaz, we're going to start with your Trek Fuel EX. So we're going to ignore Kaz, pretend he's not here. Right. What, what, what was your experience like on his bike? Pretty pleasant. Unsurprisingly, it is a very even keeled and well considered bike. For the very most well part. considered. Yes. Um, he runs his brakes too far out. The bike too point far is quite out far. And too far in. Too f like, I, don't, I didn't mind that. They fit my hands, hands well. Yeah. Hands. Hold your hand up. Dude, are we, we going to do this? Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do a triple. I've got bigger hands than you. No, look at these big hands. We <laughs> all have pretty similar sized <laughs> hands. Guys, I think we're so uncool. The, the we are lever. so uncool. We're talking about brake levers on the internet. Of course we're yeah. cool. <laughs> all right, this is my, I think the Please. bars are rolled too far forward and the brake bite point is too far out, but that's just personal preference. I think the bar roll is good. The brake's too far out, too far in, and you both have your excess buttons the wrong way around. No, yeah, I think it's too easy for that. <laughs> yeah, we have the correct way. <laughs> is that Cane Creek Shock? Actually looks pretty cool. But it's got like a yardstick to, for the compression climb switch. It's a big old lever on there. Yeah, it's it easy access. It also easy has a built-in yeah. little hex key. Oh, does yeah, it? Yeah, there's a hex key. It's a magnetic in there, so you always can access those little Oh, that's actually pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and friendly. Yeah. But it was very, very calm, very composed for me. I mean, it was going into the stroke deep quite a lot. Is that something you've been going after on purpose? No, but I think for me, the setup's a lot more balanced. Like, yeah, as far exactly. as the amount of stack, yes. I'm at like 27%, mm -hmm. maybe 30 on mm -hmm. that. So it's like, and I have a progressive spring, so it works pretty well for me. It's maybe a touch on the softer side overall, but I think it's not, it's not as stiff. Like, it's it's not set up particularly soft. It's like yes. medium soft instead of like extra soft. It's like, I noticed as well, because you're actually a bit shorter than me. You're 5'11", are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but your saddle is like way higher than I could handle. Dario, 
What was... Could, did we work out what the knocking was coming from the front of Kaz's bike? I think we might have figured it out. What do you think it was? At first, I thought it was a bent rotor. Mm. And then been, that handed off to you. Mm -hmm. Today, there was an attempt on my life. Kaz's bike. Absolutely unbelievable. Bad boy. I gave him that wonderful transmission, and he gives me this. And it exacerbated, and we later found out that all of Kaz's rotor bolts were loose. <laughs> I'm just letting them work themselves out. One so of which had worked fewer. itself out so far it was hitting against the fork <laughs> on the descent, which was the, the repetitive yeah, I mean, ticket. I mean, I, I know it was loose though before, but I fixed it. You so. fixed it, right. yeah. And then another thing happened. And then yeah. something else, yeah. But all in all, a very, a very solid bike. Mm -hmm. The wheels make too much noise. The wheels make too much noise. That you might be also, like a later issue. We yeah, do. we're figuring that out. I think yeah. you need to leave it up a bit. You need to get like a trust fork on there or something. It needs to be a bit weirder. Yeah, there's plans it's in too the works nice. for some yeah. weirdness to okay, happen. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, well, that's your bike then. Dario, let's talk about that Yeti. Yeah, let's start with the stem on your bike. It kind of yeah, looks before like, we get to the bike, let's talk about the stem. Yeah. Like, was it in a fire? Well, no, yeah. I, How big was uh, the fire? Yeah. A better question. So a while back, I was like experimenting with Fire. Stripping it with fire, with stripping the <laughs> anno off of parts, and you can. This is like not public recommendation, but you can use oven cleaner to strip anodization off of mm -hmm. aluminum parts. It smells bad. It, don't do it indoors. It'll it'll mess you up. But I I sprayed a bunch of oven cleaner on that stem, and it like created this kind of what I thought was a cool like tie dye looking pattern, and it was just blotchy and gray essentially. But yeah. Uh, at, on a different build, when it was like all silver and just that, it looked great. Mm. But with this melange that I've got going yeah, on... Yeah, there's a lot of weird different tones of gold and... I, mean, I don't get too much into it. All the parts work great. They're yeah, like the parts the brakes I didn't, I couldn't really stop with the brakes. Like, you I tried you to run yours way out. I, run I tried to squeeze ding. them and then I didn't. I couldn't slow down because they they're like almost hitting the bar. Yeah. It was scary. You tend to run, at least in my interpretation, I mean, our setups being the same weight, Yeah. I felt that your forks were actually a fair bit softer than mine for sure yeah. um what's what's when you're going to a fork setup what are you pursuing mm, grip grip for, yeah for sure that's like primary especially like it's been winter we're kind of coming out of that so i'll like start running a firmer setup as things dry up bar roll. what was yeah. your interpretation of the bar roll? Well, when you have the, the bars are super far back they're rolled really far back compared to the way i would run them but then that's the perfect. seat is also like the this seat's forward yeah so the seat's yeah. like this and the bars like that so it pushes you like you have a nice like upright <laughs> comfortable <laughs> cockpit you're locked in. I felt like on that trash compactor where it's like squeezing the walls are like coming in. <laughs> I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm like by a margin, the tallest of the three of us. Yeah. yeah. And definitely all of our seated positions feel pretty similar. I just have like the most correct seat angle. Mm. Um, I didn't, I didn't hate it though. I'll say that. I didn't no, hate it. Like it's, it's pedalable. You, you it's used, fine. I pedal that bike so much and it feels great. But hopping back on mine, I did like it more. But also I've noticed that it was the amount of weight in my hands when pedaling. I was quite like... I have really long arms, mm. which I think helps. I like like quite ridiculous ape index, so I can just kind of like sit on my palms or even on my like knuckles, but and I'm like sitting like this. It wasn't right necessarily the, the dimension. It wasn't the the distance between the contact points, but rather the tilted saddle mm -hmm. I felt was putting so much yeah, weight. Yeah, it does push you forward. It I mean, we don't... Like a the thing, forward. the road that we were climbing today is like the flattest thing. Yeah, it needed to be steeper to make it yeah. really sing. Like anything I tend to be climbing is either like you're out of the saddle because it's technical or it's like a very steep fire road. And on that area of the bike, your GPS. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, going it's right down there. with a nice human meat shield between you and the G and the satellite. Does that does it uh, even work? Yeah, it works great. Yeah. Are I mean, sure? it, we, all of these these. <laughs> Rays are just penetrating us from any angle. Like, oh, heavens. It's, <laughs> if you're worried about that, like you have like Wi-Fi going through you right now. Like, oh, no, no, no. It's not that. It's an accuracy thing. Oh, no. It works great. Does it work great? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not in a Faraday cage. It's just sitting there. Yeah. I, for reference, I run my GPS like on the seat post. But why? Uh, so I don't have to look at it. It's just down there. I'm with that. I agree. I don't yeah. do that either. But if I do, I put it somewhere. I it's can't either in my oh, like, really? fanny pack yeah. or down there. I can't no look way. at the numbers. It's so annoying. I hate yeah. it. I love it. No, I can't. Oh, also, like, when I'm like, you... Good uh, day, right. folks. <laughs> nice and toxic. If you, were to, if, you were to, <laughs> if you were to crash as well, like, it's the most protected part of the bike. Like, 
So you don't lose your little beep boop. Yeah, okay. Right, well, I think it's time for... I imagine it's going to be more of an ode than a review. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we're right, going right, to yeah. bow down to the <laughs> yeah, The amount of words that have been written about this magical purple uh, beast are... Long-term loner and test mule, my spy. is too stiff <laughs> um maybe not for everything but for like a various day of riding there are points when i think it has drawbacks it's quite firm it's but quite i firm. think you know what i i think i i see it as actually a product of a weakness of, of riding for me i'm not i don't intuitively like scoop the bike up a lot oh, okay. so i think actually i hate the feeling of coming into something and diving or steps and mm. i just i for me, that's actually softer than I would normally run. Like that's actually the softest set of forks I've had in a while. Mm. Like if I have Zebs, like I'm below, I'm like 10% sag. On wow. some Foxes, I'm like 11% maybe. Yeah, I don't never measure sag in that way. I only, like, I only do it if, for, it's funny if I was doing it recently, but I don't normally do it either. Yeah. yeah. I do like, I, I liked riding your bike. I'll say it. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. I have to say that too. I was, um, <laughs> I didn't want to like it. Cause, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. I, knew, I knew it was going to be good, but you said so many things. I thought, like, my expectations were... I expected it to well, be my, way stranger. My, it's yeah. it's a pretty normal, but, yeah. like, mine is probably the weirdest yeah. amalgamation of parts. That said, they're all, like, pretty... They're pretty good, standard. normal, high-end bikes. Like, yeah. I mean, yes. Spoiled. Like, we are speaking of three, like, extremely nice bicycles. Yes, we're very lucky. Yeah. Mine looks funky. <laughs> it rides <laughs> light good. for what it is. Like, we've said, you've said it before a thousand times, but that bike does ride light for a 160 mil super slack bike. So, it kind of, mm -hmm. we're just riding, like medium techie trails but it feels nice like easy to move around so i like that about it in terms of cockpit dimensions that sort of stuff the contact points was there anything that i have on my bike there that your bar roll is too far forward for me mm. and it matches mine pretty close like yeah. i feel like we'd be comfy with that so yeah. why because it's something so interesting we talk about weight distribution on bikes and we, when we review them we talk about so many elements and then of course bar roll has a huge effect on that as well mm -hmm. yeah kaz what are you trying to get out of the bar roll that you go for which as dario said much like mine is actually quite far forward purely feel like really i'm just setting it up and i just roll them even if i had like my eyes closed it's like a, a mix mm -hmm. of like visual and feel just where it feels most comfortable and on the so we're we talking uh comfort in terms of body position mm -hmm. or is that in terms of is there some a riding characteristic or it's body position body just position. like yeah i can kind of tell like where there's like that sweet spot for me mm -hmm. which isn't gonna be the same as everybody's but it's like all right that's right yeah, yeah. I, I don't like to conflate rise and back sweep mm -hmm. for me i try and completely separate them by just sticking just to rise and, yeah. um, and see, I feel that. like you guys are are doing that. Like you're using back sweep to go up mm, by rolling so yeah, far right. forward. Like I used to run my bars like that. Like when I first moved to Bellingham, had my bars set up like that, and then got a bunch of shit from some friends of mine. I was like, huh. So I started thinking about it. Like experimented with like back, forward, neutral, whatever, and have settled on like essentially like the the bend is like flat. If you mm. look at it, the horizon line of it. See, I go underneath the check mine to try and get the rise perfect because there's less complication, there's less bends, I find. Wrapping up now, I think for me, it's um, I'm probably peaked a lot of more curiosity. I love mixed wheel bikes. I don't tend to ride them that often. Mm -hmm. but it's probably piqued my interest. Kaz, what is a takeaway that you have from Dario's bike? Hmm. It's tricky. I think, I mean, it kind of confirmed what I thought, like the seat position and the cockpit position, it didn't work for me, but I could see how it worked. Like having the seat at such an angle, that's way more drastic than I usually do, but it was fine. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't like, that's going to be super uncomfortable yeah. and I can see how that would be a benefit. So I don't think I'm going to switch my setup, but it was easy to understand why that setup works for him. I think for me, honestly, it, forks that felt at the start, like way too soft, like yeah, unnervingly do. soft, actually. You know what? It wasn't actually that bad. I kind of came into it. I think that maybe I need to go like 2% back because I just do, I just pump up. The well, it depends a lot on the frame it's on too. And then the big question, what is something that, apart from the joy of riding a wonderful bike, what was something that you took away from my spire? I learned that your legs are shorter than I thought. Yeah, Much really shorter. shorter. Like yeah. so short. I felt like I was I am sitting. I Gimli, son of Gloin. Yep. I felt yeah. like I had my seat down when I was pedaling up the hill. <laughs> yeah, I was like, um... I like the way that the old suspension felt, despite it being a bit stiff, and I haven't really spent a ton of time on it, so mm -hmm. I'd be keen to. Yeah, yeah. overall, I can definitely see why you like the bike. Like, yeah. it does feel 
could do everything and it was yeah man I'm, I'm i'm stoked that we're in agreement that i'm just right about everything as always <laughs> anyway so that's it thank you very much for watching I'm not gonna let them get in a repost there and let us know in the comments which is your favorite bike which would you like to ride and what was something that maybe we missed that you saw these bikes and thought that ain't right thanks guys and we'll catch you next time